Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will install the Big Tree Tech Manta motherboard with the CB1 Raspberry Pi replacement board on a stock Marlin firmware 3D printer and have it run Clipper firmware. I will install them on the Flying Bear Reborn 2, as this is a Core XY machine with linear rails, and it has a dual Z axis controlled by two stepper drivers and uses two optical limits switches to align them automatically. The hardware of this printer is pretty good, but the one thing I don't like is the MKS Robin Nano motherboard and screen. The MKS firmware is always buggy, and running Marlin has also limited the maximum printing speed of this printer. Using stock Marlin firmware, I tested this printer a few weeks ago, and it can print up to 150 mm per second with 1500 acceleration with pretty good results. So let's see how fast we can push it after the new motherboard and clipper are installed. As the new generation of Big Tree Tech motherboards, this Manta series is quite special. When you go to their website, there are quite a lot of different options. To start, there are two versions of this motherboard, the M4P and the M8P, and they are pretty much the same other than how the M8P can support up to 8 stepper drivers and more fan ports, and the M4P can only support up to 4 stepper drivers. One thing that is pretty noticeable is that there is an empty slot on the motherboard for you to plug something in. This slot is for you to put another CB1 board as a Raspberry Pi replacement. Due to the chip shortage, no one can get a Raspberry Pi at a reasonable price anymore. Like how a Pi 3B that is supposed to be around $40 now costs 3 to 4 times that price if you buy it from Sculpers. So something like the Orange Pi, the CB1, and other alternatives have become available. One of the advantages of using this Manta and CB1 combination is you don't need to print a case for your Raspberry Pi and connect it to the USB port of your motherboard to make them work together. You can just snap the CB1 on the motherboard so they become one piece. So, all the options you can see here are how you want to configure the board. For example, if you only want the motherboard, you can select M4P or M8P depending on how many stepper drivers you want it to support, or you can order them with the CB1 Raspberry Pi replacement board. As the motherboard doesn't come with stepper drivers, you may use those on your old motherboard or order a new set of TMC2209 silent stepper drivers with the board. The CB1 also has an optional heat sink, and there's the EZ version, which has different stepper driver connectors and will be available soon. So today, I will use the Manta M8P as the main board, the CB1 as the Raspberry Pi replacement, and some TMC2209 stepper drivers for this installation. As I have a 7-inch HDMI touchscreen from Big Tree Tech, I will use it to run Clipper screen. I would like to thank Big Tree Tech for sending me all of this to review, and with that, let's get started. First, I will prepare the board. By default, all four jumpers on the stepper driver connectors are shorted. As I'm using UART mode, I will remove three of them and leave the second jumper shorted like this. After that, we can plug the stepper drivers in, and as this printer has two Z axes and two Z limit switches, I will use two independent drivers to control them. Before I install the board to the printer, I will use a USB-C cable to power it up and configure this board first, and also short this jumper that allows using a USB to power the board. Before we can turn it on, we need a micro SD card and download the operating system image, which is Debian Linux with Clipper firmware. This image is available on the Big Tree Tag GitHub page. As you can see, there are three images. The first one is the full version with Linux OS, Clipper, Clipper screen, main sale web interface, and all drivers. The second one is a minimal version, and the final one is the ready-to-use example for their Huracan printers. To make the installation as simple as possible, I will just download the first one. After that, just use the Raspberry Pi imager to write the image file to the microSD card. When the process is complete, we need to edit a text file on the SD card to input our Wi-Fi SSID and password. Open system.cfg and use any text editor or notepad. Just change the default SSID and password to your own network, insert the card into the motherboard, and turn it on. 
After around two minutes, it will boot up and you should be able to find the IP address of the board. To find it, you can use other tools like Angry IP Scanner, Advanced IP Scanner, or just open up your router web interface to see the device name BTT-CB1. We can now access the board using SSH. You can use any SSH client, but I'm going to use PuTTY. Type in the IP address of your board, and the default username and password are both BQ. As the image file came with everything we need, we actually don't need to install the Clipper installation script, but as I'm going to use the touch screen, and I do need the Clipper screen, the manual said we need the script to repair Clipper screen before it can be used on the CB1, so I just installed it and ran the script. Enter F for function, and enter 2 to fix Clipper screen. Next, we can turn off the board and connect the touch screen using an HDMI cable. For the mini USB port, we will connect it to one of the USB ports of the motherboard to enable the touchscreen feature. Then, I will open up the printer and take a look at the stock motherboard. Since this printer uses an AC heated bed, it will power the heated bed using AC power and this SSR relay. For a normal DC powered heated bed, the bed is connected to the motherboard, but for this one, the relay is connected to the motherboard instead, and we will use the 24 volt power of the motherboard to trigger this relay to power the bed. The wiring looks a bit more complicated than usual, but they work the same. The hard part is to label the wires, as none of the wires were labeled on this printer, so I have to trace them back to find out which is which. After I labeled all of the wires, we can refer to the diagram on the motherboard manual. Big Tree Tech is doing a pretty good job of clearly labeling all the connectors, so I will just connect all the cables. I finally changed the Z1 and Z2 motors to use the 4th and 5th connectors instead of using the 3A and 3B connectors. As these two connectors are controlled by the same stepper drivers, I want to use two independent drivers to control each of the motors. The rest is pretty straightforward, and I just marked all the connectors I used in red. Of course, some wires are too short and I need to extend them, but this may not be required for most printers. After all cables are connected, we can turn it on and log back in using SSH. For now, we need to find out the address to let the CB1 communicate with the motherboard, and you can just copy and paste it from the user manual. This is the address. Copy it again, and we will use it in the printer.cfg file. Then, we can open the web interface in our browser, and just type the IP address to access the main sale clipper web interface. Go to machine, and open the printer.cfg file. As there is basically nothing here yet, we can paste the address, and then go back to Bigtree Tech's GitHub. They have a ready-to-use config file for Voron2, so I will just copy everything here and paste it into the printer.cfg file. Use your own address to replace the one in the sample file. Next, you can change the parameters according to your printer. As the Voron2 is also a Core XY, we don't need to change this part unless you want to boost the maximum speed and acceleration. We also need to configure the X, Y, and Z axis, the extruder, and the thermistor according to our hardware. You can get all the information you need from the pinout diagram in the user manual. Let's take a look at the X axis as an example. You need to change the step pin, direction pin, enable pin, as well as end stop pin according to the motherboard. As I connected the X axis to motor 1, we can take a look at this table. The pin numbers for motor 1 are PB4, PE2, PC11, and PF3. So we just need to put all these pin numbers back into printer.cfg. You may also need to home the printer to check the direction and the limit switch location. If anything is reversed, you just need to add an exclamation mark to reverse the direction. You should do the same to the Y and Z axis. As this printer has two Z axes, you can see I have a Z stepper and Z1 stepper here. The pinouts can also be referred to in the same table. For the extruder, since this extruder is using a 7.5 to 1 gear ratio, I will put 75 to 10 here and adjust the rotation distance, just like how you calibrate the E-steps value in Marlin. And you need to calibrate this value by extruding 100 millimeters of filament and increasing and decreasing it to make it as accurate as possible. 
For the PID tuning and input shaper values, I copied them from another config file I found online for the same printer, and I put all the links under the description. If you are installing this motherboard on other printers, you should be able to find a similar config file from the default examples from Clipper. All you need to do is change the pin out to match your motherboard. After I'm done with the printer.cfg, I made a simple stand for the touchscreen and a plate for the motherboard and printed them to test my new setup. I will print at 250 millimeters per second with 3000 acceleration and see how it looks. As you can see, the lines are breaking, which means the heated block may not be able to melt the filament fast enough. So I increased the printing temperature from 215 degrees Celsius to 230 degrees Celsius and continued. It looks a little better, and the print finished all right. Next, I printed the motherboard plate with the same 250 millimeters per second speed with 3K acceleration and 230 degrees Celsius temperature with a similar result. If I want to push it to 250 millimeters per second with a better result, I guess I would need to upgrade this printer to a larger heated block to keep up with the speed. Then, I decided to print a few Benjis at different speeds to see the results I could get. I will try to boost it to 300 millimeters per second and 5K acceleration and see how it looks. As you can see, the 4010 blower on the stock print head is definitely not enough, and the cooling of these areas look awful, so I stopped the print and stuck another 5015 blower on the bed to blow directly on the part to see if I could get a better result. As you can see, it improves a lot. There are no cooling issues at all for the part that the 5015 blower blows directly on the part. Compared with the stock fan only print, the difference between these areas is huge. So I may need to upgrade the fan as well. These are three Benjis printed at 150 millimeters per second, 250, and 300 with up to 5000 acceleration. If the part cooling fan is upgraded, this printer can definitely print at a much higher speed. However, the print head is spaced really close to the stepper motor, so if I need to upgrade the fan in the future, I may also need to reduce the print volume a little to make the larger 5015 blower fit. Okay, the printer is now working, and it can print much faster than it could with the stock setup with Clipper. But obviously, more upgrades like the heated block and the part cooling fan need to be done to get a better result. But overall, I would consider this upgrade pretty successful. Finally, I will put everything back onto the printer. As the enclosure of the stock motherboard is too small, I just used the plate to stick the new motherboard at the bottom of the printer. I didn't put the screen back as I want to keep the acrylic doors, which have a small cutout for the stock 3.5 inch screen, but I will just let the 7 inch touch screen stick onto the door. In conclusion, using this Big Tree Tech M8P motherboard and the CB1 Raspberry Pi replacement board to upgrade the printer is not that hard. It's a bit easier to use a standard Raspberry Pi to do everything from scratch, as you don't need to make another firmware for the stock motherboard, and you don't have to deal with all the Linux terminal commands. But editing the printer.cfg file to make your printer work still takes pretty much the same time. The good thing is the M8P motherboard and the CB1 are in one piece, and you don't have to make a case and connect the Raspberry Pi to the USB port of the motherboard. The documentation from Big Tree Tech is not perfect, and although I consider it to be fairly good and easy to follow, don't expect complete step-by-step -step instructions that cover every single step, as everyone's printer is different. However, if you do have some experience working with Marlin firmware, you should be able to make this upgrade without too many issues. 
If you are interested in this new Big Tree Tech Manta motherboard and the CB1 Raspberry Pi replacement board, I put the links to those as well as the links to everything else I use in this video under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button, and make sure to press the notification bell to receive new video updates. I will see you next week.